voltage and power are distinct concepts. Voltage is the measurement of the potential difference existing between two specific points, whereas power represents the rate at which work is performed. A high voltage signifies a greater potential difference, which in turn enables the transfer of a larger quantity of power. In a three-phase system, voltage is gauged between each of the three phases and the neutral point. The line voltage denotes the voltage measured between any two phases, whereas the phase voltage indicates the voltage between a single phase and the neutral point. Specifically, in the 200A volt system, the line voltage is 200A volts, and the phase voltage is 120 volts. Conversely, in a 240 volt system, the line voltage is 240 volts, while the phase voltage remains at 120 volts. The transmittable power within a three-phase system is influenced by the voltage, current, and power factor. The power factor assesses the system's efficiency, ranging from 0 to 1. A power factor of 1 implies perfect system efficiency, while a power factor of 0 indicates complete inefficiency. The formula for calculating power in a three-phase system is power equals the square root of 3 multiplied by voltage multiplied by current multiplied by the power factor. In this equation, power is measured in watts, voltage represents the line voltage in volts, current is denoted in amps, and power factor is a dimensionless value. The equation clearly shows that power is directly proportional to voltage. Consequently, a 240 volt system can transmit more power compared to a 208 volt system, provided all other variables remain constant. When installing a three-phase photovoltaic system, knowing whether you have 208 volts or 240 volts is crucial because the system's power output will vary based on the voltage. With 208 volts, the system will generate less power than if it were connected to 240 volts. If uncertainty exists regarding the voltage, consulting the local utility company is recommended. They can provide information on the available voltage in a specific area. To further elaborate, let's delve into the specifics of these two voltage configurations and their implications for electrical systems. 208-120V system is a common three-phase system often found in commercial buildings. It's derived from a three-phase Y configuration, with the voltage between any two phases, the line voltage, is 208V, and the voltage from any phase to the neutral conductor, the phase voltage, is 120V. This system is advantageous because it provides both 208 volts for three-phase equipment and 120 volts for single-phase loads like lighting and standard outlets. The 240-120 volts three-phase system is less common than the 208-120 volt system but can be found in some commercial or industrial settings. Like the 208-120V system, it also provides 120 volts for single phase loads. However, the line voltage in this case is 240 volts. This higher voltage can be beneficial for equipment that requires more power, as it allows for lower current draw for the same power level, reducing conductor size and associated costs. Now let's consider the impact of these voltage differences on equipment selection. When selecting three-phase equipment, it's essential to ensure that it's compatible with the available voltage. Equipment designed for 240 volts may not operate correctly or efficiently on a 208 volt system, and vice versa. This is because the voltage affects the motor's performance, transformer operation, and other electrical components. Using equipment with the incorrect voltage rating can lead to overheating, reduced lifespan, or even failure. In the context of photovoltaic systems, the voltage rating of the inverter is crucial. The inverter converts the direct current electricity generated by the solar panels into alternating current electricity that can be used by the building or fed back into the grid. The inverter must be compatible with the grid voltage, which is typically 208 volts or 240 volts in a three-phase system. If the inverter is not correctly matched to the grid voltage, it may not operate efficiently or may even be damaged. When choosing between 208 volts and 240 volts for a three-phase system, several factors should be considered. Firstly, the available voltage from the utility company is a primary constraint. If the utility only provides 208 volts, then that's the voltage that must be used. 
Secondly, the power requirements of the equipment should be taken into account. If the equipment requires a significant amount of power, then 240 volts may be a better option, as it allows for lower current draw and smaller conductor sizes. Thirdly, the cost of the equipment should be considered. Equipment designed for 240 volts may be more expensive than equipment designed for 208 volts, and vice versa. Finally, the potential for future expansion should be considered. If there is a possibility that the power requirements of the building will increase in the future, then it may be wise to choose 240 volts, even if it's not strictly necessary at the present time. Regarding the power factor mentioned earlier, it's important to understand its role in electrical systems. The power factor is the ratio of real power, measured in watts, to apparent power, measured in volt amps. Real power is the power that's actually used to do work, while apparent power is the total power that's being supplied to the circuit. In an ideal system, the power factor would be 1, meaning that all the power being supplied is being used to do work. However, in reality, most electrical systems have a power factor less than 1 due to inductive loads such as motors and transformers. These inductive loads cause the current to lag behind the voltage, which reduces the power factor. A low power factor can lead to several problems, including increased current draw, higher energy losses, and reduced system capacity. To improve the power factor, power factor correction capacitors can be installed. These capacitors provide reactive power that offsets the inductive reactance of the loads, bringing the power factor closer to one. In a three-phase system, power factor correction is typically done on each phase individually. The size of the capacitors required depends on the amount of reactive power that needs to be compensated. The NEC, or National Electrical Code, provides guidelines for conductor sizing and overcurrent protection in electrical systems. Table 310.15 B16, for example, provides ampacity ratings for insulated conductors rated up to 2000 volts. These ampacity ratings are based on the conductor's insulation type, size, and ambient temperature. When sizing conductors, it's essential to consider the expected current draw of the equipment and the ambient temperature in which the conductors will be installed. Overcurrent protection devices, such as circuit breakers and fuses, are used to protect conductors from overheating due to excessive current. The size of the overcurrent protection device should be matched to the ampacity of the conductor. The NEC also provides guidelines for selecting the overcurrent protection devices based on the type of equipment being protected. In addition to conductor sizing and overcurrent protection, grounding is another important aspect of electrical safety. Grounding provides a low impedance path for fault current to flow back to the source, which helps to trip over current protection devices and prevent electrical shock. The NEC specifies the requirements for grounding electrodes, grounding conductors, and bonding conductors. Proper grounding is essential for ensuring the safety of electrical systems and protecting people from electrical hazards. Now let's discuss the practical implications of choosing between 208 volts and 240 volts for a three-phase PV system. Firstly, the inverter must be compatible with the available voltage. Most inverters can be configured for either 208 volts or 240 volts, but it's essential to verify this before purchasing an inverter. Secondly, the wiring and conduit must be sized appropriately for the current draw of the inverter. As mentioned earlier, a 240 volt system will have a lower current draw than a 208 volt system for the same power level, so smaller conductors and conduits can be used. Thirdly, the overcurrent protection devices must be sized appropriately for the conductors. The NEC provides guidelines for selecting overcurrent protection devices based on the ampacity of the conductors. Fourthly, the grounding system must be properly installed and bonded. The NEC specifies the requirements for grounding electrodes, grounding conductors, and bonding conductors. Fifthly, the PV system must be inspected and approved by a qualified electrical inspector. The inspector will verify that the system is installed in accordance with the NEC and other applicable codes and standards.
When selecting a contractor to install a three-phase PV system, it's essential to choose a contractor who is licensed and experienced in installing PV systems. The contractor should be familiar with the NEC and other applicable codes and standards. The contractor should also be able to provide references from previous customers. Before hiring a contractor, it's a good idea to get multiple bids and compare the prices and services offered. Be sure to ask the contractor about their experience with three-phase PV systems and their knowledge of the NEC. Also, ask the contractor about the warranty they offer on their work. In summary, the difference between 208 volts and 240 volts three-phase power lies in the line voltage. In a 208 volt system, the line voltage is 208 volts and the phase voltage is 120 volts. In a 240 volt system, the line voltage is 240 volts and the phase voltage is also typically 120 volts, although other configurations exist. The higher voltage of the 240 volt system allows for lower current draw and smaller conductor sizes for the same power level. When selecting between 208 volts and 240 volts for a three-phase PV system, it's essential to consider the available voltage, the power requirements of the equipment, the cost of the equipment, and the potential for future expansion. It's also important to ensure that the inverter is compatible with the grid voltage and that the wiring conduit and overcurrent protection devices are sized appropriately. Finally, the PV system must be inspected and approved by a qualified electrical inspector. Understanding these differences and considerations is crucial for ensuring the safe and efficient operation of a three-phase PV system. Remember to consult with qualified electrical professionals for specific guidance on your installation and always adhere to local codes and regulations. Electrical work can be dangerous and it's essential to prioritize safety at all times. When working with electricity, always to energize the circuit before working on it. Use appropriate personal protective equipment such as insulated gloves and safety glasses. If you are not comfortable working with electricity, hire a qualified electrician to do the work. Safety should always be the top priority when working with electricity.